So welcome back to the channel. Um, this is the third and for a little while will be the final video on the 70 Chevelle that was built for the model car video Facebook group build off. And as you see, um, I took a couple extra things off of the NASCAR uh, kit. I got some of the decals off of it to um, really make it look like a Saturday night uh, race car. Something a guy would take to the track and uh, get out there and um, try to make him a little bit of money on the side on the weekends after he's worked a long week at his job, whatever job he works. But uh, all in all, it turned out really good. There was some really amazing um, entries into uh, the competition. To get into what modifications had to be done to it, we're going to move the camera a little bit so that I can get a little bit better picture for you. Uh, the front end, I put some uh, some interesting lights up here. Uh, I have a lot of leftover lights from the semi truck kit, and so I put a uh, little um, the little pieces of the lights that uh, like go down the side of the truck. I put those behind these headlight lenses. I put yellow ones in the middle and red ones uh, on the sides. And then I put the lens over top of it. Just try to give it a, an interesting look. This one's kind of turned white a little bit, but that one still looks good. All right, so uh, this was with the NASCAR kit, a little jack that you can use. I didn't do any details to it, but uh, it does work a little bit and you could actually lift the car up a little bit with it. So uh, I decided to throw it in there with the kit. Um, the engine, had to be set back enough so that it would fit and you can see how much i had to go back into the actual sheet metal of the hood to get the engine to fit because it like it was it was still setting up higher than it needed to um just because of the front end being a nascar front end instead of being a chevelle front end so if we take a look here, you can see that the engine's a little further back, uh, just a little, but that's why I had to cut the hood. And uh, I did a black wash on it. I really, all I did was um, I painted the whole engine with black wash. I didn't do any colors. I kind of wanted it to look really high performance. I wanted it to look like the guy just did like a base uh, gray coat on it. And so I literally black washed the entire thing. Nothing on it has any kind of color. If you look down in here, you can see I did the NASCAR headers. I had to put those because you see how close the A-frame is on each side. And remember in the previous video that the engine wouldn't even fit. So I had to take those headers, the manifolds off, the exhaust manifolds came on it. I had to take those off. And ended up having to put the NASCAR headers on it. And that allowed it to be able to slide up pretty far. Not all the way. But you can see where some of the pipes to the headers go down. And so I slid it up as far as I could. And that's pretty much where the engine ended up sitting. That's still good. So you see that a little bit further and... The fan would have been inside the the fan shroud where it should have been. So probably another quarter of an inch or so. And it would have been sitting perfectly. But uh, you see I had to end up cutting even more of the fender to get the tires to fit. Um, so you can actually see the whole front tire is exposed. I was going to leave the tires uh, to where they could turn. But the way this setup is, um, the uh, tires barely fit in here as it was. So I went ahead and just glued them solid so that there was no turning. And like I said, you couldn't get a full turn out of it anyway. You would have to do even more uh, sanding, uh, trimming of the, the fenders to get the tires to fit in there. If you look at the back uh, or previous video, 
I actually had to cut up higher on the firewall to get the engine to fit. Uh, you can see right there for sure. You see that whole that spot right there. That's how high I had to cut to get the transmission to go in. And you can see the distributor right there. Um, I only had a week left to do it because I didn't even get to start on it the first week of the competition. One of the things I did forget to mention is that this is the first car I tried to make an alternator bracket for it. And so if you see right here, let's see if we can zoom in. There we go. See, I put an alternator bracket on it. I'll put some pictures to show the progress of that when I first build it. But it turned out looking pretty neat for my very first alternator bracket. Because we know how these engines are. The infamous floating alternator. And there will be a video in the future on how I go about making these out of the sheets of styrene. there is in the glass itself that little spot that you see that was something wrong with the glass I cleaned it as much as I could but that's how it ended up we're gonna flip it over take a look at the bottom Let's see what we did here so let me turn it so you can look at that a little bit so what I ended up doing here is like I said it's full NASCAR front end and you saw in the previous pictures how I had uh, really glue bombed the front end to the frame here and everything pretty much was flat black at the time uh, I ended up cutting a notch all the way across here on the body to get this to fit in uh, actually nice and tight there and I had cut all this out so that I could get the so I could get the um, control arms to fit and uh, I didn't get time to put the shocks on it. Um, I'll get to that at some point. I'll come back and do a little more work on the car. Um, but you can see it does have the cool springs in there. Like I said, I didn't get to the shocks. Um, if you've seen these side pipes before, at the very end, they have a little tiny piece that comes out that's like closed. And since it was going to be running on a racetrack, I decided to cut those off. And then I ended up drilling the end of it out so it looked like it was a real exhaust pipe. But you can see the pipes go down the sides and they are connected to the header collectors. I really thought it was a neat idea that, say, if, like, if the guy wanted a little bit more power, like, you know, to pass somebody, he could pull the uh, handle or hit a button for the cutouts and then that would give him, like, you know, no exhaust, like, straight power right out the manifold, right out the headers and maybe he could make that pass or something like that. It's kind of the idea behind that. Um, if you look real close, the drive shaft doesn't quite hit the um, the input for the transmission, which you know means I need to do a little bit of work on the drive shaft. So all in all, like I said, you know, it turned out like a great car, um, but it does need some work in the future. Pretty much worked on it about an hour every day to, just so I could get it done in time. Um, it turned out pretty good. One of the comments um, that I got from someone on one of my Facebook groups is that uh, why did I put a dragster engine in a car that was going to be on a circle track? And so I got to thinking about that. I was like, well, that's a really good question. I said, I guess I was going for the meanest look possible um, with, you know, the whole blower and the air scoop and everything else sticking out of the hood. But, uh, yeah, if I do continue to work on this car to 
get this car um, to look like it is a circle track car, then one of the things I will do is carefully pop the supercharger off of it. I uh, may even have to take the engine out. I'm not sure. But uh, we'll pop the whole supercharger off and just put a regular intake and a four barrel and a nice little air cleaner on it and then use the other hood uh, on this car and then put some decals on the hood. So uh, there's a lot of work that can continue on to this car. Um, like I said, I was just... I had a week left to build it, so I was putting it together as fast as I could. And uh, so that was a really good question. It was like, why did I put this uh, dragster engine in uh, a car that's going to be on a circle track? So uh, one of the comments I said was, well, I guess he could uh, race it on a circle track. He just could only make left turns. Because if you turn it like this and look at it, like he wouldn't be able to see part of the road in front of him towards the right so as long as he was making left turns on the racetrack uh, it wouldn't really be a big deal <laughs> he just couldn't see anything from half of the windshield over in front of him uh, because of the engine being so close to the windshield and as tall as the engine is so yeah he would have to rely on his spotters and only make left turns if you're interested and seeing all the cars that were entered into the build-off competition, then there's a couple options for you. I'll leave a link down in the description for the video on Model Car Video's YouTube channel. If you're interested in seeing all the cars that were in entered into the competition and all the build-up pictures and all the comments and everything that went on during the competition, then you're more than welcome to go over to Model Car Video Facebook group and sign up and become a member. And if you search through uh, the comments uh, through the different threads, you'll definitely be able to find uh, all the discussions and all the pictures, all the, the build-ups towards the end of the competition of all the cars that were entered in. There's a lot of really cool picks on there. Um, in just the competition alone, there's a lot of a lot of really cool pictures and uh, a lot of really nice work that went into a lot of these builds that you will not get to see in the YouTube video. But one of the things that the uh, head administrator said was that if they had a category for most unique vehicle, that this build would have definitely taken the cake and uh, i think it's mainly just because it was a combination of two vehicles uh, everybody else pretty much built theirs out of the box and you know with a lot of detail or something like that you know um but we know the story of this car is that you know it didn't have any front or rear suspension and so i had to modify it as i went to have a rolling chassis and be able to build this car um for the most part like i said it turned out good for my first ever entry into a competition um these rims are the nascar rims uh just easier to fit it on the axle so i just stuck with that uh, um i want to tell you that uh i did not win the competition didn't do any extra stuff wiring anything like that uh, and that's part of what kicked me out of uh, winning is I didn't do enough detail on it um, For my first entry, you know, I'm it's like kind of a you know I'm kind of glad and kind of sad at the same moment that I didn't win But uh, it gives me something to shoot for uh, in the next competition of uh, What to do to my car so that I can win but like I was saying, it does need a little bit more work to it to make it, you know, a show winning car. So I'm going to post uh, pictures of the winning car right here. <laughs> And 
And so I want to thank you guys for following me along on this build. And uh, it will get back on the channel at some point uh, if I can get the body back off of the car. Um, we'll put a roll cage in it and do some wiring, stuff like that. Uh, but that'll come later on um, when we get through some of these other projects that we got to get done. Uh, we definitely got to get the semi truck back on the channel, which uh, will be coming up on the channel this week to do another video. Uh, it's been about three months, but uh, we're going to get him back on here and get that, uh, that build finished up so we can get to some new stuff. So thank you guys for following along on this build, and we will see you in the next video.